All right, starting of chapter 6, we're going to take care of objectives 103, 113. This is going to deal with ratios. So we're kind of getting back into fractions. Um, so there's a lot of stuff in this section. But it's pretty, once you get it organized, it's, it's, it goes pretty well. So our terms for today are ratio, quantitative, unit rate, and proportion. A ratio is the quantitative, and we'll define that word here in a second, relationship between two amounts sharing the number of times one value contains or is contained within the other. And again, we'll talk more about this as we go through problems with what ratios really, really look like. Quantitative, quantitative is just data that is information that can be counted or expressed numerically. So just basically counting numbers is quantitative data. Unit rate, this is something that we'll work on, is an object's quantity at the price of one. So it's basically a simple division problem in that process. Proportion, an equation written in the form stating that two ratios are equivalent or equal. Uh, and this is how I solve a lot of my problems uh, regarding conversions and different things like that. It just makes it a lot simpler. So we'll jump right in with ratios. Ratio, if we're going male to female, so we could do this in the classroom and divide up, you know, figure out how many guys and how many girls there are. If there's 54 to 46, what they're going to ask you to do is write it as a fraction reduced, write it as a fraction reduced form or in a reduced fraction. So we're going to set up 54 male to 46 female. Generally, whatever comes first in the sentence for the word is the first word number that goes on top. Second is at the bottom. So we're going to reduce this. We know that they're both equal, or, uh, even numbers, so we can divide it by 2. So we divide both of these by 2. We have 27 over 23. We do not want to get into mixed numbers on this. Leave them as improvers. We can also compare dollars to cans or dollars to products. So $12, 15 cans. Again, first number, first in the top second at the bottom. We can divide these by three. You have four-fifths to get your reduced fraction. Uh, ten cats to seven cats, maybe different types of cats. So we have nothing that can go in and reduce this down, so it's just ten over seven. Our last one here is three hundred over a thousand. We can cross out our two zeros and we end up with a reduced fraction of three over ten. So that's just ratios. You're just setting one number over each other. If you can reduce it, you want to do that. For unit rate, the word that you're going to look for is per. So again, we're going to set it up as something over something. So 255 over 5. This could be anything. 5 could be anything. To figure out the unit rate, we divide this by 5, and we always want to get 1 at the bottom. That's our goal for unit rates. Our next one is we're dealing with maybe hotel rooms. We're taught we're cost three dollars three hundred and seventy dollars in five nights. Well, what is that for one night? So again, we divide by five and we get seventy four dollars for one night. Now you got to be careful with this and how they ask you to write the answer. They may have you flip it over and say, well, how many nights is it? One night for how much cost? So you'll just have to reduce or re reciprocal the the actual fraction. Uh, factories use this a lot. Um, 1608 or 1608 parts in six hours. Well, how many can they do in one hour? Well, again, we divide by six and we find out that it's 268 parts per hour. And one of the things that you'll know is a lot of them will actually go in pretty even, so you won't have to reduce or get working with decimals. And again, since we've got Bass Chapter 5, you can work on and use calculators. Some other examples if we compare prices. The setup that you want to do is always money over the ounces. So in this case, we have 12 can, 12 ounce can costs a dollar eight. A 32 ounce can costs a dollar ninety two, which has the lowest price. So our setup is 108, which is dollar eight over 12 ounces. We're going to divide by 12. We're going to find out that it's nine cents per ounce. We're going to come over here and take one dollar ninety two cents over 32 ounces, and again we're going to divide by 32. So we get six cents per ounce. The second thing that you're going to do is you're going to compare the two numbers. The one that's lowest is always going to be your answer if they're asking you for which is the best cost. Again, another one is a single serving carton of yogurt costs 76 cents. A case of nine single servings, so there's your relationship. Carton costs $6.39. How much is saved? <clears throat> 
per. So again, we're going to be dividing carton by having the yogurt by the case. So if we buy one, or would it be cheaper to buy it by the case? So again, our setup is, this is the first part, 76 cents for one single serving carton, $6.39 for a case of nine. Well, what we're going to do first is we're going to divide this one by nine, get it down to a unit rate so we can compare these two. And we find that it's, um, this would be 71. And then we want to take and care and subtract the two, 76 minus 71. We save five cents if we buy it as a case lot. So again, we're just setting up a ratio, dividing it, and then just comparing the answers and seeing how much the difference is. We have other ones. There's a lot on this board, so you might want to take your time getting this one. This is the how many whatever problems. Um, this is where you want to use proportions. So we're going to set two ratios equal to each other. So in the case of travel, we have 40 miles in an hour. We want to find out how many, how many hours would it take us to go 120 miles. So we set it up as two ratios set equal to each other. And what we're looking for is, how do I go from the 40 to the 120? Well, in this case, I would just multiply by 3. So whatever I multiply by here, I have to multiply by here to get my answer. So 1 times 3 is, it would take us 3 hours to drive 120 miles. <clears throat> Graduate to undergraduates, you're talking about students in a college. You would set up 4 graduates to 9 undergraduates. We're looking for undergraduates. There's a total of 6,280 graduates. So the first thing I want to do is, I'm, gonna just, I'm just going to go and divide 4 into 628 or 6,280, just to see if it goes in evenly. If it does, and you find it, multiply that number by the bottom number. So we found that this goes in 1,570 times. We're going to multiply that by 9. That gives us our answer of 14,130 students. In this case, it's undergraduates. People to people, three clowns to two jugglers. We want to know if we have 24 jugglers, how many clowns do we have? Well, again, 2 times 12 gives us 24. 3 times 36 gives us... Or, 3 times 12, sorry. 3 times 12 gives us our answer of 36. So whatever we multiply the bottom, we multiply the top to it. And our other one is employees to computers. So we have 11 employees, 3 computers uh, as the ratio. We want to find out how many computers we would have if we have 77 computers or employees. So we take 11 times 7 gives us 77. 3 times 7 would give us 21 computers. For factories, this is if we have a rate that's tripled or doubled. So if the rate is tripled, how many jars in 20 hours? We would take our ratio of 303 jars per hour, 3 hours, change that into a unit rate. We would find that by how many hours. So we want to find out in 1 hour we get 101. Well, how many does it take to make it in 20 hours? So we multiply both top and bottom times 20. And if we do that, we're going to get an answer of... 2020, and then we're going to triple that. So we're just going to triple the top number, and we get 6,060 jars. So this one may take you a couple of extra seconds to work through just because of the complexity of it. But sometimes you can't figure out what goes into what, and you have to come up with an equation. So what we're going to do is our taking our 19 ounces at $3, $342. We want to find out how much it costs for 35 ounces. So what we're going to do is we're going to cross multiply. This actually sets up the equation. So we're really looking at crossing 19 times x. And then we're going to multiply 342 times 35, which is this part right here. That gives us 11,970. We're going to divide that by 19. And we end up with $630. So that's our making of the equation for the ratio. Our last two sections are total ratios. These ones are a little trickier. You'll see this with graduate and undergraduate students, and then also in, in the worksheets that you'll get, you'll see it in frogs and toads. So what we do is we figure out there's four graduates, there's nine undergraduates. The first step that we're going to do, because they give us a total number of students, which is 8,892, if they give you the total number of students and don't tell you which which of these they give you, then you have to take, and step one is to add up the two numbers. So 
So in this case, 4 plus 9 is 13. So we're always looking for what they want you to find. In this case, we want to find undergraduates. So step two is we're going to set up a proportion. So we're looking for undergraduates. So we're not going to use graduate students at all. We're going to use undergraduates here. So we're going to put our 9 here, undergraduates, undergraduates. And proportions, you have to keep your units on top and on bottom. You can't flip them around. So whatever you put on top over here has to go on top over here in regards to the labeling of it. So our totals are on the bottom. So our total is 13 for this setup. Our total of number of students was 8,892. So that's our setup in this. So we're going to take in our step three is we're going to cross multiply our 13 times our x, our 9 times our 8,892. Our next step is once we've multiplied that, we get our answer. We're going to divide by 13 and solve our one step equation. So we have a, a 6,156 undergraduates for this school that you're looking at. Other one that you'll see, and I want to put this up here for you, is the toads and frogs. Um, again, they'll give you how many frogs, how many toads. If they tell you the total number of them, that means that we're going to be working with a total ratio problem. So in this case, we want to find out, well, how many frogs are there? Well, again, we have to add our totals up here. So 5 plus 10 gives us 15. So our setup is, again, we're looking for frogs. So we're just going to be working with frogs on top. So we know it, and in this ratio, there's five. Our total is 15 from the whole set, and our total is 256 from the set. So totals go on the bottom, item on top. We're going to cross multiply, get 15x. Five times 256 is 1275. We're going to divide by 15 to both sides, and that gives us our answer of 85 frogs. So these will take you a little bit. It's just basically making sure that you read the question carefully. And if they say a total number of what you're looking for, that's when you work the total fractions. Now at the bottom, I'm just giving you some extra things to look and have in your notes for this section of this chapter. So 1 foot 12 inches, 1 yard 3 feet, 1 yard 36 inches, 1 mile 5,280 feet, 1 mile equals 1,760 yards. So that's the first section of chapter 6 with ratios. Again, the biggest thing that you can do to help yourself on this one is show your work and bring your notes, obviously.